Hi, I'm Dan. This is Vinyl Theory. And I think when I post this video, it'll be my third in like five or six days, which is something that I haven't done in a long time. Years, I think. But I'm doing it because I've been spinning more records lately than usual. And in my area, we're looking at a 90 plus degree weekend coming up. And I definitely won't want to be doing this. So I figure while I have these recent spins in my head, I will show and tell. And then once we get past this uh, heat wave in the spring, I'll, I'll come back and do some more. So I was at the record store on Sunday. Uh, and that's when I showed the uh, Super Heaven record in the last video. I got that there. And at the same time, I found several singles from Tears of Fears. And I just could not leave them there. So this is Everybody Wants to Rule the World. This is a Japanese 12-inch. It has an extended version, an urban mix, as well as an uh, extended version of Shout and a B-side called Pharaohs, which also has some guitar parts from Everybody Wants to Rule the World. It also has an interview portion at the end, which shuffles through several songs from Songs from the Big Chair, clips of those, and then some interview bits about those songs, which is actually kind of cool to hear. The bridge on the extended version of Rule the World, when the song came upon that section, I expected a vocal, and it wasn't there. It was just instrumental, which was actually kind of cool. And then it went into one of the guitar solos, and then there was kind of a jarring edit drum break, and then kind of back into the song. And as someone who's produced some music and done some editing in an arrangement, in post-production, I could really hear that splice, as it probably was, like a tape splice. But yeah, the edit was kind of obvious, and I was like, oh, wow. I mean, if I've heard that version of the song, I don't really remember. I have a uh, box set, a CD box set, super deluxe of songs from the big chair, and I'm sure most, if not all, of these songs on these singles I have but, you know, it's on vinyl. And these were very inexpensive. And I, like I think I said, this is the a Japanese pressing, which is always nice. The vinyl is always very well manufactured. There's the insert. Couldn't tell you what that is, but I'm assuming lyrics. And there is some English on the bottom. Oh, it's from the interview. That's cool. Looks like there's a little drawing in that box there. This is only six dollars. Vinyl is near mint. It's a clear amber Quiex vinyl, I assume. So, or maybe maybe it's super vinyl. I'm not, I'm not sure. But excellent find. Another 12 inch. Broken with head over heels, and then broken again. It's called a preacher mix. I think th there's a sample in there that's probably referring to. This is a U.S. 12 inch and so yeah side one is an intro with broken which sounds like it has a live element to it into head over heels and then back into broken and that i think that's usually how they would play it live is with that configuration and then you got a, a remix of head over heels seven inch version on the other side with the b side when in love with the blind man and that one has a melody from the working hour in it and i think this song came before songs from the big chair and evolved into that one so it's kind of cool to hear that kind of evolution and in this case it's kind of a callback if you were listening to this and you'd already knew songs from the big chair and then you heard that like oh that's wait isn't that on that song that's how it was for me, and I was trying to recall. Wait, what? What melody is that from? 
So yeah, really cool shot of the band live there too. This one was only $5. Again, great shape. This one I do need to clean, but it's a 12 inch for Suffer the Children from The Hurting. It looks like a negative version of the cover of that album. Suffer the Children remix with the instrumental and a track called Wino, which I haven't played this, so I'm not exactly sure what that is, but I figured I would just show it now. Uh, yeah, UK single, thinner jacket, again, $5. This one is a 10-inch UK single for, I believe, a soulful re-recording, which I am familiar with, and I look forward to playing this one. Also need to clean it. Also has the B-side C song, which I, I think I've heard before. But yeah, didn't have any 10-inch uh, records of Two Sophia, so that was kind of cool. This is the first one I saw. I was like, oh, that's neat. And then I saw all of the others, and I was like, well, I guess I'm taking all of those home. Brian Auger's Oblivion Express. This is, I think, their fifth album, Straight Ahead. This is on RCA. 1974. So this is something I picked up in a discount bin. I think it was two, maybe three dollars. But the cover looked interesting. And I sampled it on my phone. I think it was probably just the first song. And I thought, okay, that's interesting enough, even if that that in that brief sample, it's gotta be worth taking a shot for a few bucks. And it's great. It's jazz rock with a, a hint of funk and some R&B at times. And it was a little dusty and stuff, but it cleaned up really well. And there are some vocals now and again, but I actually enjoyed them. And like I said, there's several albums before this, and I think maybe some of those are considered to be better. But I enjoyed this very much. It started pretty upbeat vibe and then i mean there's only two tracks on the first side and they're both nine or ten minutes so it was kind of a journey and there's a lot of percussion it's really nice some great bass guitar stuff brian plays organ electric piano moog and he does the vocals as well so for a couple bucks this was a really cool find also from, I believe, the same store in that same discount bin is George Cromarty, I believe is how you would say that last name. It's called Wind in the Heather, Compositions for Guitar. And looking at this, I thought, Wyndham Hill. And it is kind of. It's actually on Dancing Cat Records. This is from, what, 1984? Yeah. And it's basically distributed by Wyndham Hill. It's produced by George Winston, who is a Wyndham Hill artist. And as far as I can tell, Dancing Cat, who I had never heard of before, is still an active label, but distributed through whoever owns Wyndham Hill now, I forget. Doesn't really matter. But this clearly had the Wyndham Hill vibe. I pretty much knew what I was getting into. And the guitar artists on that label are usually the ones I enjoy the most. So I had confidence in this. And this was way better than I expected. As it started, I was like, yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much what I was thinking it would be. But then it just kept getting more impressive. It's kind of a classical guitar style and vibe, but it's also like an instrumental folk album. And I enjoyed it very much. The more I listened, the more I enjoyed it. Now it's actually mastered by Bernie Grundman, who's, you know, he's been doing this for such a long time and it sounded great. I enjoyed it so much that I looked him up, got a bit of the history, found out he passed away in 1992 apparently by suicide, which was sad to, to read. And this was his last solo album. And the one before this was 
I think a decade before it. So I liked it so much that I looked for his other records and I found his first album, which is a little bit more expensive than this, but it seemed like it was worth buying into. So I ordered his first album, Grassroots Guitar, and it should be here probably next week. So I really look forward to hearing that. And this only had one vinyl pressing. I don't believe there was a CD ever. And if you ever see this record, I would get it. And if I have a link to check it out, I'll, I'll put it in the comments. And then lastly, I was just in the middle of spinning this. Coltrane Jazz, 1961. This is a reissue from 2010. You see that glossy jacket. A Rhino reissue. Tip on back. It's a stout and thick jacket. Lovely. It's pressed at RTI. It's mastered by Bernie Grunman from the original tapes. I mean, if an original sounds better, it can't sound that much better and would be so much more expensive to get in a condition that would present it that way. You know, I was so fortunate to be able to be collecting at this time and get these kinds of fantastic reissues. I think I've seen some reissues from that time like this and the Miles Davis ones pop up now and again, and I would highly recommend them. It, it just sounds so warm and round. The, the bass is so present and not, it doesn't sound cut off. It doesn't sound reduced. It, it sounds like it's all there. So yeah, this, uh, I hadn't listened to this in a long time. Sounds great. I'm about to play side two. So that's it for this one. Uh, after the, the warmth passes, I'll come back and talk to you about what I spin between now and then. So VC, thanks for watching. Take care. Enjoy your music.